The bird's eye view of the coastal region in Kenya sets a beautiful opening scene in this thread of stories. Whether it is the white sandy beaches in Diani Kwale County or their bronze counterparts nicknamed Golden Beach in Mombasa, the coastal city has no shortage of breathtaking views. Nor does it have a shortage of elements that disfigure its beauty. Drugs, an undeniable menace which is swallowing the potential of over one million residents residing in the coastal region. According to the National Authority for the Campaign Against Alcohol and Drug Abuse, NACADA statistics, as of 2023, they measure that at least 2.3% of the population in Mombasa is currently using heroin. Robbie Mashijaji has been clean for the past six years after a heroin addiction which lasted for over one decade. But there is no running away from the past in his line of work as the founder of Okwa Pwani Initiative, which helps recovering addicts have a safe space to heal from the wounds of the past. A common staple in his line of work is visiting drug dens to speak to those battling addiction, a difficult task given that it triggers his craving for the drug he once depended on. It's quite tempting. I feel like uh, I, it's like I'm feeling so if I need, I need to take some drugs, yeah? Because I've been in this place for quite some time, for some years. So when I come here, I feel like uh, when I see these syringes and whatever, the stuff, I feel like uh, I'm getting some urge, yeah? I'm okay, but uh, at first I was feeling some withdrawals. I, was, I had some goosebumps. The love for basketball saved Robbie on the rough days of addiction. His love for the game is still freely on display in his dressing and the deep protectiveness he has for this basketball court, which he says gives young people in his neighborhood a constructive outlet, as opposed to the destructive one, which almost ruined him. It all started when he got a job. I was getting enough money to sustain my drug addiction, you see? So, I started not going to work, 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 I used to use my salary to sustain my addiction. Robbie went from a man who had it all to losing everything. We had uh, all the things at home. We had a nice home. We have a, I had a nice family, eh? a loving family. Anyone who mentioned addiction and the need for rehabilitation became an enemy. The only place he found allies was in the drug dens. My son, he was very close to me. No matter, I was a drug addict, but he used to come to drug dens look for me. Yeah. He used to come to look for me. He stayed with me there. I'm, I'm high as high as high. Maybe he'll take my phone. He'll take anything valuable that I have. Maybe some money. He'll take it. Go with it at home. See? So at times he'll take a tuk-tuk. He takes me home. See? So. I saw like it's a, it was a, like I, I was punishing him for something he knows don't deserve to be treated that way. He was missing me. He wanted me by his side. Having walked the six-year journey of sobriety, Robbie says that another menace is darkening the already black pool of addiction. For the last, uh, let's say, five, four to five months, I have an emergency synthetic drugs. Zimekuwa nyingi na kwa sababu kwa access them imekuwa pia is they are cheaply available and easily available. Zinakuwa na different way means of administration. Kuna zingine ni fluids of which you have to inject. Kuna zingine ni powder you have to smoke and roll to roll and smoke. Kuna zingine people they sniff. You see, so there are different uh, varieties and appear different ways of administration. The United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime defines a synthetic drug as drugs which are manufactured artificially by humans using chemicals. Potency can vary, but it is often much higher than in naturally occurring alternatives.
Among the drugs that keeps being mentioned as the nerve center of many of the synthetic drugs in Mombasa County is a substance which is used to sedate horses for veterinary doctors to perform minor and sometimes major surgeries on horses. I will refrain from mentioning the name of the drug to avoid further misuse of it. What I will tell you is that it is meant to be prescribed by a veterinary doctor. However, what if I told you that procuring the drug was as easy as one? Two. Or three. The first store I go to is the Nairobi Veterinary Center, a well-stocked veterinary product store located in the heart of the central business district. I ask the attendant for the drug in question without any written prescription. She shoots me a strange look, but once I tell her I will pay the amount, she directs me to the cashier. I pay for the drug and walk out of the veterinary center without any questions asked. It is almost too easy to secure the drug. So I proceed to another veterinary store to find out if it was an isolated incident. Next, I visit Wakulima Mashinani store, still within the CBD in Nairobi, and ask for the same drug. The attendant dashes to call someone who appears to be his senior. She appears and asks for the name again, which I repeat. But no vet has sent me. Once I make the payment, I get out of the store once again with no more questions asked. I now have two parcels of the same drug, which is strong enough to put down a horse for vets to conduct surgeries on it. When used by human beings, it causes decreased blood flow to the skin, necrotic wounds, which are wounds with dead tissue and easily get infected due to poor blood circulation, slowed breathing, sedation of the brain, which can last for days, causing users to go into what is described as a zombie state. Later, I will show you how these effects are mirrored in those we encountered while producing this report. <laughs>